চার ভাগের তিন ভাগ অর্থাৎ পঁচাত্তর পার্সেন্ট যায় মায়ের দিকে এবং চার ভাগের এক ভাগ অর্থাৎ পঁচিশ পার্সেন্ট যায় বাবার দিকে সংক্ষেপে মা পাচ্ছেন গোল্ড মেডেল সিলভার মেডেল এবং ব্রোঞ্জ মেডেলটাও মা পাচ্ছেন বাবাকে সান্ত্বনা পুরস্কারটা নিয়ে সন্তুষ্ট থাকতে হচ্ছে এটা সোনার নাসাইতে উল্লেখ করা আছে কিতাবুল জিহাদ অধ্যায় নম্বর ছয় হাদিস নম্বর তিন হাজার একশো ছয় নবী সাল্লাম বলেছেন জান্নাত তোমার মায়ের পায়ের নিচে If, if your answer is good, you shouldn't be afraid of a challenging question. No, not at all. So therefore I said that if anyone proves to me a religion better than Islam, I'm ready to change, that means I'm confident. But if you ask me personally, which is the ultimate? For me, ultimate is the Quran. If someone gets a question again of the Quran, I will try and prove it logically. What is the logical answer? And I tell that there is not a single verse in the Quran which goes against established science. No, Quran is not a book of science. But... It's a book of signs, S-I-G-N-S. -S. More than 6,000 signs in the Quran are there. Out of these, more than a thousand speak about science, S-C-I-N-C. -S Albert Einstein said that science without religion is lame, and religion without science is blind. Right? But Quran is not a book of science, it's a book of signs. But because I'm a medical doctor, and because Quran is a logical book, it's a scientific book, it's not a book of science, There is not a single verse in the Quran which will go against established science. There were verses which people thought were against science, but those are hypotheses. Hypothesis. There are hypotheses that the world is flat, which Quran doesn't agree with that. But that was a hypothesis, not a scientific fact. The difference between a scientific fact and hypothesis, for example, heart pumps blood is a scientific fact. However much science advances, we'll come to know more about the heart, but heart will not pump blood, liver will not pump blood. So science and religion can coexist. It has to coexist. Scientific facts, not hypothesis. Please note. There's a difference between scientific theory, a scientific hypothesis, it's one category, and a scientific fact. Religion cannot go against scientific fact. If it is a true religion. Let's talk a little bit about the harm that religion can do. Religion can do many good things. Obviously, it's helped countless people in their lives with a way of living and, and, and a belief system, and it's made them happy, and it brought them joy. What about the harm? Why, how can it, sometimes it's used for harm. The thing is that, that can religion do harm? Actually, if you understand the religion correctly, religion cannot do harm. But because of misunderstanding of the religion, there can be a lot of harm done. And today, one of the maximum harms done in the world, whether it be India, whether it be Western countries, it is in the name of religion. If you understand religion correctly, religion tends to get the people together. To understand the creator better. It tends to bring peace. All the religions, I'm not talking about Islam only. The basic concept of all religions is to get peace. And Islam means peace. But unfortunately, what the people, the so-called scholars, inverted commas, I would say inverted commas, they utilize religion for the ulterior motives. And they quote things out of context many a time. And they deviate people from the truth for the ulterior motives. It may be the politicians. It may be the people around you. So therefore, I say to understand the religion, go back to your scripture. Any scholar says anything of any religion. Don't blindly follow until you check up the scripture. So it's not a bad thing to necessarily to be a fundamentalist. No. <laughs> In fact, I say, what is the meaning of the word fundamentalist? Fundamentalist means a person who follows the fundamentals of one particular subject. For example, if a person wants to be a good mathematician, he should know, follow, and practice the fundamentals of maths. 
unless he is the fundamentalist in the field of maths, he cannot be a good mathematician. For a person to be a good scientist, he should know, follow and practice the fundamentals of science. Unless he is the fundamentalist in the field of science, he cannot be a good scientist. We can't paint all fundamentalists in the same brush that all are good, all are bad. Depending in which field the person is a fundamentalist, you have to label him accordingly. If you have a fundamentalist robber, who is fundamentalist to rob people, then he's bad for the society. On the other hand, if you have a fundamentalist doctor, whose profession is to save human lives, then he's good for the society. As far as I'm concerned, I say I'm proud to be a fundamentalist Muslim, because I know, I follow, and I strive to practice the fundamentals of Islam. And I know that there is not a single fundamental of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. There are many people who are, are turned off by religion. And they have said to me, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. There, it seems like they're going away from fundamentals when they say that. What is spirituality? Spirituality, again, the various ways of defining. The real meaning, if you ask me, spirituality means the way of understanding our Creator God. So people may have been put off by because the fundamentals they are following in their book may have put them off. They may be wondering, what is this ritual? Is it right? Is it like that? Should we kill people? So they are put off. So they have a yearning, but maybe yes. they, don't, they don't have the appropriate way to get there, of so they're turned off. Of course, they're turned off. But they still have the desire. Therefore, the innate desire is there in every human being. Even if he calls himself an atheist, he has that feeling. He may not call him God. He may have that supernatural feeling. Therefore, the definition of religion in Oxford is a belief in a superhuman controlling power, a personal God or God that deserve worship and obedience. So that supernatural being, that feeling is there, which you can even call spiritualism, that you know, the person wants to know who the supernatural power is. What does fear have to do with it? Fear in the way of understanding God, you mean? In religion in general. See, fear is of two types. One is fear that saying, I fear that I may be harmed, fear that I may go in loss. The true religious fear is that are talking about that I don't want to go away from Almighty God. I don't want to make him sad. I don't want to you know, go against his dictates. That fear is different. One fear is because you will be harmed. If I do this, I'll go in loss. If I do this, I may die. If I do this, then maybe my health will become bad. It's a fear of loss. One is fear of displeasing your creator, Almighty God. The true fear, so people say that in religion there should not be fear. I said, what do you mean by fear? I said, there should be. I fear that I may hurt my mother. I may hurt my wife. So the fear that with you, the love of your and God relationship is love and fear. It's two sides. It's a very two sides, same coin. You know, fear that I fear that I will displease him. I want to please him because he's done so much. He has given me everything. And if you realize how many people really thank God for what he has given us. Simple thing is, how many of us thank the air? The air that we breathe is free. If it stops for five minutes, we'll die. So do we thank our Creator for the air that is given us free? Take it for granted. Take it for granted. So then a person starts realizing this is taqwa level, what we call God consciousness, his piety keeps on increasing. Could you define for me the word truth? In Islam, Allah says in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, See that you tell them that truth is alive and falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. If you ask me, truth is something which is a fact. It's a fact. So what is the nature of reality? How do we know this table exists? Ah, there are various ways of making this. One thing is either by scientific proof or by seeing it. It may be an illusion. It may be illusion. Therefore, finally the Quran says truth and falsehood, if they come together, falsehood will perish. So what may seem to you to be truth may not be truth. For example, going to desert is a mirage. You may see that there is water, but it's not there. Well, knowing that mirage, a mirage can exist, we are bombarded by messages every day, movies, radio, newspapers, many religions, speakers, people, parents, brothers, sisters, everywhere. How do, does one person discern the truth out of all these messages? That's right. The best is the gray matter God has given you. It's with your gray matter. For human way, I can say logic. Every time the age keeps on changing. Previously there was the age of miracles, then came the age of nutrition, poetry, today the age of science and technology. So today I would say that logic is the only way you can differentiate. 
Everyone will say, I'm right, I'm right. How do you differentiate? So whatever gray matter our creator has given us, you use that to differentiate truth from falsehood. People should start using their brain. Of course. And human beings use a very small percentage. Those who are intelligent use 3-4% of the brain they use of the intelligent, the others use less than that. Since Muhammad and many other prophets before and after, there have been other people who have come along and said, I am next, or I am the new Messiah, because they've heard a message. They hear voices, they have a dream. Where do those messages or voices come from, these other people? I mean, hundreds in, you know, if not thousands. That's right. As far as Islam is concerned, we believe that Almighty God has sent messengers to all the nations. What we believe that several messengers came right from Adam, peace be upon him, to Noah, Abraham, down the line, to Moses, Jesus, peace be upon them all. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger. Quran says in Surah Ahzab, chapter 33, verse number 40, Ma kana Muhammad aba ahadim mirjalikum, walaqi Rasulullah, that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the father of any of you men, but he is the messenger of Allah. And he is the seal of the prophets, Khadim and Nabeen. So the Quran says that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger. After him, no other messenger will come. So who are the ones that came after it, but say they are? There are name many. But if you see all the religions that came before, the so-called religions, as I told, that religion is only one. In the sight of God, which I told you early in the morning when you asked me the question, that in Islam there is one religion, that is submitting a will to Almighty God in Arabic called as Islam. But all the people, because of interpolation in the scriptures, deviation, there are many religious names were given. But whatever religious scriptures we have, all the scriptures that came before the Quran, they prophesied about the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They prophesied, whether it be the Bible, whether it be the Buddhist scriptures, whether it be Hindu scriptures. Now a second question, that those people who claim or those philosophies or thinking systems that claim about those people from messengers of God after Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We believe in the Quran that when Almighty God has said that he'll be the last messenger, Prophet Muhammad the last messenger. Anyone who says after that, that he gets a revelation, he requires a psychiatrist. One thing is a revelation from God, one thing is help from God. Fine, we may have many difficult times, not know the answer, God may help you. That's a help from God, Elham. Because that's possible. Help from God is possible. But saying direct revelation, the way Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, God, the way Moses, God, peace be upon him, the way Prophet Muhammad, God, the lineage is finished. After Prophet Muhammad, there will be no other messenger. And he's been prophesied even in the Christian scriptures, in the Jewish scriptures, in the Buddhist scriptures, in all the major scriptures of the world. I know that there are many other philosophies, I don't name if you want, I can name many, who have come after the revelation of the Quran. And they're mistaken. They are or crazy or seeking power. Yes, innovations. some people, some people, for example, Bible. He picked up from here and there, picked up from Bible, picked up from Quran, saying a new religion. It's a person who came. I mean, what's new about it? They don't have a particular scripture which is fixed. It's in hiding. So there are people who have come. There are many people who have given ways of life, like Rajnish. His way of life is there. But these will not be called as religions. Rajnish called himself God. So these are all small groups, the splinters that have come up. Some people claim themselves to be God. Some people claim to be messengers. But you won't find any major, after Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you won't find any major religion. That has come. Yes, more you'll find many, hundreds. But these we don't call as messengers at all. Right. Can you define for me what does the word faith mean? Faith actually means a belief. It means iman, is the right word in Arabic, iman. Having faith, having a belief. And if you ask that, what is faith for me? It is, there are six pillars of faith in Islam. It is belief in one God. Believing in his angels, believing in the hereafter, believing in the messengers, believing in the books, and believing in destiny. So these six are the pillars of faith. So if I say that I'm a person who has faith, or I'm a believer, that big word is moment. So the moment I say that I'm a person who is a believer, who is a faith. So believe in what? Believe in one God. Believe in the hereafter. Believe in the angels. Believe in the messengers. Believe in the destiny and believing in all his revelations. So if I believe in all these six things, I become a believer. And then there are divisions we can go on.
মানবতার পথ প্রদর্শক আল কোরআনুল করিম কি ওসিয়ত করেছে মানব জাতির জন্য অনুষ্ঠান সর্বস্বতা থেকে বেরিয়ে জীবন ও মানবতা মুখী হওয়ার জন্য কি নির্দেশনা দিয়েছে আল কোরআন করিম পবিত্র এবং বিশুদ্ধ জীবন যাপন করার জন্য কোরআন দিয়েছে কি কি নির্দেশনা জানতে হলে দেখুন কোরআনের ওসিয়ত প্রতি বৃহস্পতিবার সন্ধ্যা সাড়ে ছটায় বা পুনঃ সম্প্রচার দুপুর সাড়ে বারোটায় বাংলাদেশে পিস টিভি বাংলায় অতি উত্তম অর্থনীতি অর্থনীতি সর্বোৎকৃষ্ট বাণিজ্য নীতি বাণিজ্য নীতি সঠিক লেনদেন বৈধ উপায়ে বড় লাভ ইসলামী অর্থনীতি কত সুন্দর ভাবে নতুন যুগেতে সফলতা অর্জন করেছে জানার জন্য দেখুন ইসলামী অর্থনীতি পরবর্তী অনুষ্ঠান পিস টিভি বাংলায় রিলিজন রিকোয়ার ফেথ আ বিলিফ ইন সামথিং উইদাউট প্রুফ I would say yes and I would say no also. Both ways. Because if you read the Quran, the Quran starts with, after even the first chapter of Surah Fatiha, the second chapter of Surah Bakra says, Alif Lam Mim, Zalik Al Kitab La Rebbe. It says, Alif Lam Mim, this is a book in which there is no doubt. It continues, it gives a definition of faith. A person who has faith in the gap, in unseen. It means you have faith in things which you don't see. But if I have to explain, there is something like blind faith but i go a step further this blind faith is also logical faith like for example if i give a lecture on quran and science there are many things i mentioned the quran speaks about the big bang speaks about biology about zoology about hydrology and because being a medical doctor then someone may ask me that zakir do you believe in hell and heaven I mean, where does science prove hell and heaven? And science doesn't prove hell and heaven. Science doesn't prove that there's life after death. So they ask, do you believe in blind belief? So I said, it is a logical belief that, for example, suppose the Quran mentions about 100 things about science. 80% approximately, just for argument, if 80% has been proved to be 100% correct, the balance 20% is ambiguous, unknown. Not that it's proved wrong. When 80% is 100% correct and the balance 20% is ambiguous, neither right, neither wrong, my logic says that even that 20% will be true. So it's a logical belief. It's a blind belief, but based on logic. So I believe that there is life after death, there is heaven and hell, which is a blind belief based on logic. So it's a logical belief, according to me it's a scientific belief. But if you ask me scientific proof, science hasn't reached that far. to prove the existence of life after death. Or God. Science oh, can't, God, yes. obviously can't prove God exists. But I, in my lecture, I've proved God scientifically also. Again, using the same logic. But with the help of the Quran. Using scientific data, you know, proving the existence of Almighty God scientifically. It will not be directly, it will be indirectly. Like how I use this logic, saying when 80% and 100% correct, 20% is ambiguous, my logic says that will be correct. Unless it's proved wrong. Even if one thing is proved wrong from the 20% ambiguous, then I can say it may be wrong. So in this way, I've proved even the existence of Almighty God scientifically. There's a big talk about four hours. I've given it. God doesn't show up and perform miracles very often. I mean, he, there are many stories, especially in the Old Testament. But if he did show up today, if Allah came and performed a miracle, then would it be too easy for people to believe? Is that why we don't get miracles on a regular That's basis? That's a very good question. What we believe... to the age of a particular thing. Previously, 
many centuries back. It was the age of miracles. Miracle by definition means you cannot logically prove how it was done. That's called a miracle. So what was miracle yesterday is a scientific fact today. Yesterday flying in the air is a miracle. Yesterday means about 5,000 years back. It's a miracle. Today, it's easy. You and I know. So what is the miracle yesterday can be a scientific fact today. What's a miracle today may be a reality tomorrow. So what I normally say that previously was the age of miracles. So all the messengers that came before, during the age of miracles, for example, Moses, peace be upon him. It's mentioned the Bible, he performed miracles, mentioned the Quran, he performed miracles. Because that was the age of miracles. Prophet Jesus came, he performed miracles. Therefore, we find that all the previous messengers that you find, they did miracles. Then came the age of literature and poetry. So when the Quran was being revealed, it was the age of literature and poetry. So the way the Quran was written, today scholars of Arabic, whether Muslims or non-Muslims, they agree that Quran is the best Arabic literature available on the face of the earth. But the way it is written, don't have folk. It was sufficient. They didn't bother about scientific facts. They didn't bother about miracles. Miracle is there, but now not the age of miracles. So the way it was written, people believed in it. But today is not the age of literature and poetry. If I tell you in a very poetic fashion, the world is flat, will you believe? Then the answer is no. Today is the age of science and technology. So the beauty of the Quran is, it has proved itself to be the word of God in all the ages. So can it continue to change with society, with progress? Can religion, can belief change? Yes, as far as can religious belief with society and progress and all. What we say, that the understanding of the Quran can change. The same Quran was there 1400 years back. The way it said that not to have po poetic fashion, people were convinced. Today, the poetic fashion won't convince me any. Today, we have come to know about science. Okay, if you have poked, there are so many diseases. No less than 70 different diseases. They can be tapeworm, pinworm, hookworm. So now, because of the advancement of human knowledge, we believe in that verse not because of poetry, because of scientific knowledge. Quran is same, and the law is the same, but knowledge of us has increased. So one verse of the Quran has got various angles. So did man evolve or was man created? Man was created. But after creation, his knowledge keeps on developing. So what knowledge we didn't have a few centuries back we have today. For example, if you tell me that Isaac Newton is supposed to be the best scientist of the century. But today a person who has graduated BSc, graduate of science, he has more knowledge than Isaac Newton. He knows all the laws of Newton, he knows his mistakes, but he's not a better scientist. Isaac Newton with the limited knowledge, the advances he made, the discoveries he made, it is phenomenal. So human being, their knowledge keeps on increasing, their way of life keeps on changing, but the basic remains the same. So coming to your question, what I'm going to say, that can religion change by passage of time? The basics will never change. The basic understanding of Quran will always remain the same and of Islam will remain the same. But the periphery may change. And even because of understanding of science better, the what we call fatwa as an opinion may change. For example, the basics of religion, I would say, have been the same in Christianity. There's no religion as Christianity, as I told you in the morning. It is basically all the prophets taught only submittable to God. In Arabic, we say Islam. But all the prophets, what we call today, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, or Prophet Moses, Prophet Abraham, they taught the same message of believing in one God. It's the same. The form of worship, prostration is the same. How to worship, where to keep your hands, that may have changed. From the time of Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus, Prophet Muhammad. After Prophet Muhammad, it has been fixed, finalized. So, basic message is same, believing in one God and following his commandments. The integrity may have changed. After the Quran, it is finalized. Again, the basic message is the Quran cannot change. So what is intoxicant is prohibitive, it will always remain a prohibition. But, for example, the Quran says that don't make your own hands the cause of your own destruction. Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 195. That means committing suicide is prohibited. Previously, maybe a few decades before, no scholar said that smoking is prohibited, is haram. In Arabic, we say haram, prohibited. But now, because we have come to know, World Health Organization says that more than 4 million people die every year only because of smoking. So now most of the scholars today say smoking is prohibited. The verse of the Quran says, don't make your own hands the cause of your destruction. Slow poisoning is wrong. So previously we did not know that smoking was slow poisoning. So previously, Islamically, smoking was not wrong because the knowledge was limited, but the rule is the same. 
or interpretation changes over time with more knowledge? I wouldn't knowledge. say interpretation. I would say that the basic interpretation is the same. But with more knowledge, our way of life may change. The basic will remain the same. Oneness of God will remain, it cannot become true tomorrow. How to pray will remain the same. But about the nitty gritty, what to eat, what not to eat. So broad lines have been given. When science advances, we come to know this is poisonous. If it's poisonous, it's prohibited. So previously, not that those scholars were fools, but the knowledge wasn't developed. With more knowledge, we get more in-depth and the minuteness, the periphery may change. The way we live may change. But the basic message will remain the same. So religion can change with progress. But let's talk but, about what doesn't change. Hmm. Scripture. It's hmm. written. Okay. How are we to interpret Scripture? Is it literal? Is it stories told as metaphors? Is there a combination? How are we to know how to interpret which? Is as far as religion changes, as I told you, some part of understanding of religion basically is the same. So if you say that Zakir's religion changes, that's totally wrong. And that some part understanding may change. As far as Scripture, Scriptures cannot change. Now, according to William Moore, William Moore, you might have heard him, that he is one of the staunchest enemies of Islam, a very great historian. He said that no book has remained, no religious book has remained as pure as the Quran for 12th century. That is 200 years back. Being a staunch critic of Islam, yet he had to agree that Quran is unchanged. Now, most of the religious scriptures today that we have, besides the Quran, are not in the original form. So, by definition, a religious scripture cannot change. But all the religious scriptures that we have today, except for the Quran, has been changed. संपद के सुरक्षित न रखते पारे, विनियोग अपना संपद के नाबिद दिखोते पारे, किंतु जाकत दिले निश्चय अपना संपद बाढ़ बे थक बे सुरक्षित एवं कुवित्रो। बीस डीपीर शाते था कून अपना जाकत दानी रोत्तो पढ़ते पारे न आईआरएफआई अल्ट्रायन बैंक क्वाड्रन कोट आठ चौलीस कैल्थोर पेरोड बर्मिंगहम यूके पाउंड अकाउंट नंबर शून्नो एक एक तीन दो ही तीन शून्नो एक आई बैन जी बी बांडो एल ओ वाई डी तीन शून्नो नौ छः तीन चार शून्नो एक शून्नो दो ही चार एक नौ दो ही शॉट कोड तीन शून्नो 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 आठ तीन स्वेप बी आई सी कोड आई बी ओ बी जी बी बाईश टाका पाची आमदर ईमेल करूँ एडमिन Al Quran Karim Hedayatir Moon Shambhar Al Quran Karim Tak Hedayat Niti Chai Le Aapne Abushu Hedayat Pabe जो आल कुरान से के जरा हदायत पे चेत अधिर के आदर्श हिस्से में ग्रहण करें। अशुल आल कुरान से के हदायत लाभ करने जन्म देखो नामार अनुष्ठान इस्लाम एर बुनियादी शिक्षा शुद्ध मात्रो पीस टीवी बांग्ला। जानून शेइ मोलिक नीति माला जान माध्यम में दिनी विधान बोझा शोहज होए जाए। ইসলামের বুনিয়াদি শিক্ষা ও তার সাধারণ উদাহরণ প্রতি বুধবার রাত 10টায় আপনার সম্প্রচার সকাল 8:30 টায় বাংলাদেশে ইস টিভি বাংলায়